God. 2 Corinthians chapter 10. Been watching Lions on YouTube. And um, it's very, very interesting. Very interesting. Studying uh, the nature of how God made this creation and the different creatures that He put on the earth. And there's always a lesson to be learned by it because um, God made the spiritual world around us. Well, let me say it this way God fashioned. The physical world as a shadow of the spiritual world. The Bible teaches that many, many places. Hebrews is one of them. Hebrews, if you want to understand the nature of how God designed everything here on this earth, you read Hebrews and understand that what you see presented in this world is a shadow of the spiritual realm. Um, devils, they are real. Uh, they are spirit, but they have a beast nature. They have a beast appearance about them. They have a beast nature about them, too. And if you want to understand how they operate, you read your Bible, and then you look out into this world. And I'll show you what I mean here in a little bit. In uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 10, let's look at verse 3. For though we walk in the flesh... We do not war after the flesh, for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. Keep that in mind. But mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. Strongholds are areas of life where devils have, I'll put it this way, they've built a nest. They've dug out a den for themselves. There's an area of life where devils love to get into people's lives. And they will look and wait and study you out. It's interesting how the Bible describes leopards. Leopards uh, are unique in the, I guess, the, the cat realm, the big cat realm, in that leopards will seek a place up high. They'll get up above the field or the area that they're hunting at they'll get up above that and they'll just sit up there and they'll watch god gave them very very good eyes to see okay there is a uh, a real world scenario to that something that you and i can understand that is we're being watched in a lot of the things that we do every day, there is an, at least one agency, if not many agencies in this world, that are watching and monitoring what we do. Okay? And we've become comfortable with that. I have. Okay? If you would have told me 20 years ago that the government would be watching everything that I do, everything that I say... All the letters I write and, I mean, everything like that. I said, there's no way they're going to do that with me. Here I am wearing a watch. It's an Apple watch. Okay. Got my iPad, my phone, all the text messages and emails and videos and everything like that. I mean, this has a microphone on it. Has a microphone on it. So does this. Um... We've got cameras everywhere, and anybody with the knowledge can access that camera. I come in here one day, I was working on, uh, like during the week, I had a web camera, and I had it in my office in here, and I was working with it to get it to work to use in like Pastor Mike Online. And I'd never tried a webcam before, so I had it in the office there, and I was working with it with Wirecast, which is the software we use to stream out. And I remember shutting the software down before I left for the day, but I left the computer on, I usually do, so that the big files that we have can sync. So anyway, I come in here on a Sunday morning and uh, sat down at my desk, 
And that web camera was sitting there, and there's a blue light that comes on when it's operating. And when I looked at it, the light was on. The blue light was on that camera. And I said, out loud, you know, kind of how, how you talk to your, I said, what's that blue light doing on? And as soon as I said that, it blinked two or three times and shut off. Okay? I'm not making that up. Okay? I'm just going. Someone was accessing that camera. And I checked my computer to see if I was running any software that, you know, what might have had it on, and I wasn't. And it was just funny to me that when I said, why is that blue light on, it shut off. Okay? Somebody was watching my office. I don't know who, I don't know if it's some kid, some teenager somewhere, because there are people, especially teenagers, that they learn how on the internet to hack into people's webcams and people's, uh, you know, internet stuff called war driving. They'll drive around with a laptop and try to find, you go in these neighborhoods and towns and try to find, it, find it, people that have Wi-Fi that didn't put a passcode in their Wi-Fi. And they'll sit outside that person's house in their car and surf the internet on their internet play games or do whatever it is they do on somebody. And it's fun for them to do this. They just do it because they can. They figured out how to do it. And I figured somebody had just accessed my webcam in my office for some reason. I don't know. But anyway, there's always somebody watching you. And leopards like to get up high. The beast is like a leopard. Okay? That means he is watching what people do. He's watching the prey to see how they work. All right? So it's just, when you get that in your mind, when you understand the nature of the devils that work around us, in some ways it, it sort of makes it easy then to figure out how to defeat them. Okay? And that's where we're going with this. So he said, For though we walk in the flesh, verse 3, we do not war after the flesh, for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imaginations, and every high thing, think about that, think about what I just said, lepers. Every high thing that exalteth itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. And having in a readiness to revenge all disobedience when your obedience is fulfilled. Now we were talking last week about how uh, devils will build strongholds in our lives. Uh, take your Bible, turn to Isaiah 34. Isaiah 34. And um, let's see there. Turn there and then turn to Genesis chapter 9. Let's, let's go there. Isaiah 34 and hold your place there and look at Genesis 9. Devils can be defeated. They can be chased off, run off. They build a nest. Think of bees, wasps, any kind of, any kind of bird that builds a nest. When they go out in the world and do their business, when they come back, they're going to come back to that nest. And if you, you know, Lisa... Is, is allergic to bees and wasps and things like that and she's very she doesn't like them around the front door and so when she sees one she gets me out there with a can that shoots like a 20 foot stream I like this and um, she has me go out around the house especially around the front of the house shooting wasp killer bee killer whatever Finding these nests everywhere. If, if you find the nest, get rid of the nest, you'll get rid of your problem. For a while. For a while. Don't ever forget that part of it. Because some people may teach you that you can get rid of them for the rest of your life. Now, they may not bother you after a while. But they're always going to come back. People that handle snakes for a living, which I don't understand. I don't like snakes. But people that handle snakes for a living, some of these guys have been bit so many times that their body has developed an immunity to the poison. And they can be bit 
And it, it might swell up a little bit, but it's not going to kill them because they have been bit so many times. Their body has just, they, you know what their body has done? Their body has learned how to fight that poison off. Think of the devil's poison. When he was standing there talking to Eve, it was a serpent. And God wants us to think about that. The poison of a serpent is not in his tail. It comes out of his mouth. There's a lesson there. And a young Christian can be bit or lied to by the devil. And some of them can be carried off and carried away with these false doctrines. But someone who has developed an immunity to that. In other words, they know enough of the Bible... To where when the devil throws out that nonsense, they say, you know what? Uh, King James said this. Amen. <laughs> okay. It said in Proverbs this. In the book of Psalms, it says this. In Genesis, it says this. In the book of Revelation, the book of Daniel, in the book of Matthew. In other words, that person can develop an, a, uh, a defense against what poison the devil tries to get at him with. And they say, come on, devil, hit me with your best shot. I got a shield called faith. You can't get through this thing. My shield is ironclad. It's tight. There's not anything about it. That There's not any area of disbelief in my life. I believe what God said. And if you want to, you want to throw your darts at me, you want to throw your poison at me, you just go ahead. What is it? What is it? What a kind of serpent that shoots out stuff out of its mouth like across the room at you. Cobras do that. Man, that's, na that's wicked. What do, oh, what do they try to do? Spit. They aim at the eyes. Listen to that now. These cobras will spit out a thing and they, they target the eyes to blind the person so they cannot see. You ponder that for a while. Boy, I'll tell you what, that God designed that in these devils, in these serpents... And the devil's job is to try to blind people to, to the word of God and to the truth. The God of this, Bible says, the God of this world hath blinded their minds. And that's what these devils do. They'll shoot out their venom, try to blind people. And so they cannot see what the word of God says. Rose's brother passed away yesterday. Okay. Rose wrote him a letter. Trying to convince him that he need to be saved. And people talk to him. We tried to get uh, Ron Dagonia over there because he's in the area. And him and Ron, they would have a lot in common. We thought, thought that would be the best fit. And he made the statement, I don't want a bunch of preachers over here bothering me. Okay? Now, I don't know if that man changed his mind in the last few hours of his life. But I have not heard that. And what's happened is the devil has just blinded that man's mind. And he, was, he had scripture verses given to him. And he cannot see them. His mind cannot comprehend them. He does not get it. And as far as I know, he perished being lost. Okay, It's one thing to perish and nobody's ever said anything to you. But he's been witness to. And he died lost. As far as I know, the man died lost. Okay? That's how the devil operates. That's how he gets us. Alright? So, um, are you there in Genesis 9? In Genesis 9, chapter uh, verse 1. God blessed Noah and his sons and said unto them, Be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth. Now look at verse 2. And the fear of you and the dread of you shall be upon every beast of the earth and upon every fowl of the air and upon all that moveth upon the earth and upon all the fishes of the sea into the, your hand are they delivered. I want you to count in that verse. I want you to count how many things are afraid of man. Who's got the number? How many? Four. There's your spiritual realm right there. Principalities, powers, rulers of darkness, spiritual wickedness in high places. God's teaching you that there are... Now, spirits are not afraid of Brother George. Okay? They're not afraid. You have guns, don't you, Brother George? You know how to use them? 
Okay? Pretty sharp. Okay? May not be able to hit Lincoln's head on a penny with it, but okay, you can get you can get in the neighborhood. Devils are not afraid of that. That don't bother them. That's why they don't mind approaching you and coming after you. But there is somebody that they are very afraid of. Very much in fear of. Go to Revelation. 19. Very afraid. And they should be. Revelation 19, verse 11. And I saw heaven open. Behold, a white horse. He that sat upon him was called faithful and true. And in righteousness he doth judge and make war. His eyes were as a flame of fire. Boy, look at that. You ever heard somebody say, well, I, yeah, I went to him and boy, he had fire in his eyes. What does that mean? He's hot. He's mad. He's ready to, he's ready to fight. He's ready to go to war. His eyes were as a flame of fire and on his head were many crowns. And he had a name written that no man knew but he himself. And he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood and his name is called the Word of God. I, I have a little theory Okay, that Jesus' name starts with, in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. And the earth was without form and void, and darkness upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. And God said, let there be light. And there was light. And God saw it. That's what I think His name starts with. And it ends with, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen. That's the last verse in Revelation. Okay, now don't ask me to pronounce everything in the middle because we don't have time. That's I've just a little thing of mine, all right? I, that's what I think his name is. It'd take a long time to pronounce it, amen? And the armies which are in heaven followed him upon white horses, clothed in fine linen, white and clean, that's us. And out of his mouth goeth a sharp sword, that with it he should smite the nations, and he shall rule them with a rod of iron. And he treadeth the winepress of the fierceness and wrath of Almighty God. And he hath on his vesture... And on his thigh a name written, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. And I want you to notice, he's got a sharp sword that comes out of his mouth. That sharp sword is the Word of God. And I promise you, there isn't a devil that, I want to say in hell, but they're here. There isn't a devil in the Satan's realm anywhere that is not afraid of the Word of God. They are afraid of it. Okay? They are as afraid of that as if you were just kind of walking around and somebody just pulled a gun and stuck it right in your eyeball and said, give me all your money. Okay? I would be afraid of that. I would be very afraid of that. And devils are afraid of the man, Jesus Christ. Just like... If you're walking through the woods and all of a sudden you hear a sound and you see a white tail flapping in the breeze headed the other way. That was a deer that saw you before you saw him or her. And God put a fear of you in them. And there's, uh, I've talked to Ron Dagonia. He likes to go on these big hunts out in the middle of nowhere. And he says, he says, Mike, there's creatures out there that have probably never seen a human being in their life. And yet, when he approaches, they run. Why? God put that in them. And I want you to ponder that in your life. The devils that are going after you and making war against you, they are not afraid of you. But they are afraid of, greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. That's who they're very, very afraid of. Keep that in mind, alright? Now, Isaiah 11, or Isaiah 34. Verse 11, but the cormorant and the bittern, these are fowls of the air. These are birds. By the way, these, are, these eat flesh. Okay, they eat flesh. They eat meat. Uh, they are very fleshly things. But the cormorant and the bittern shall possess it. The owl also and the raven shall dwell in it. And he shall stretch out upon it the line of confusion and the stones of infamous. We talked about that last Sunday. They shall call the nobles thereof to the kingdom, but none shall be there. 
and all her princes shall be nothing. And thorns shall come up in her palaces, nettles and brambles in the fortresses thereof. And it shall be an habitation of dragons and a court for out. And I want you to, in your mind, think about what's being described here. Here is a palace where thorns and nettles and brambles have grown up in and around this palace. Why? Because no man was there to tend to that palace. If a man lives there, he's not going to let the thorns and the brambles grow up around his front door and around his windows and everything like that. He's not going to, he's not going to let them do that. He's going to tend to that. But a man, when a man does not live in a habitation, that's when these owls and these bitterns and um, what else is in here? The cormorants. That's when they, all these devils, that's when they start moving in. When the man is gone. You get what I'm saying? When the Bible's gone, when the man is gone, that's when they move in. Because you know what? The Bible in your life will put it in your mind and your heart to clean up the brambles and the nettles and the thorns. That'll be in your heart. You'll see those areas of life where the thorns and the, and the weeds are coming up and the potential is there for them to choke out the Word of God in your life. And you don't want that. You've got God's Spirit in you saying, why don't you clean that up? Why don't you get that, why don't you get that mess cleaned up? Why don't you get your, your sickle out and, and cut up all those thorns and brambles and throw them in the fire and get them out of there? Why don't you clean this place up a little bit? I'll tell you something, God is a clean God. He is a clean, they put the big bowl of water before the priests go into the sanctuary. They've got to clean up. And I'm telling you something, you can just, there are just some people, and I'm not trying to belittle anybody, but there are some people who just don't clean anything. They don't clean their house, they don't clean their yard, they don't clean themselves, they don't clean their car, they clean nothing. Now I'm going to give you a little history lesson and give you something to think about. Every place on earth where the Word of God has been allowed to thrive, those people tend to be clean people. By nature, they tend to be clean people. Alright? Again, I'm not trying to be a little anybody. I'm just telling you that's generally how it is. I mean, every now and then, if you're like me, every now and then, the clutter gets too much. I'm a cl I am I very quickly and easily clutter every place. My desk, here, up here, at home. Man, if it wasn't for Christina here, bless her heart. She come in Thursday. I was sitting there sipping my coffee. Come in Thursday morning, sip, sipping my coffee. And she come in staring at me about 825. And she said, would you hurry up and get out of here so I can clean this mess up? You're holding me up. I'm going, okay. And she does. She goes in there and cleans my office. Bless her heart. And every now and then she goes in up there and clean it. And, uh, but that's just, we got to have things clean. Amen. When, when God is there in your life, he'll put it in you to pull out those thorns and brambles and get that stuff out. He'll put it in you. You'll see a nest. That owls have built, that, that birds have built, that devils have built in your life. And you'll say, you know what? I'm sick of those things flying around. I'm sick of, sick of that stuff landed on my car. I'm tired of that. I'm going to get rid of them rascals. And so God puts it in you to get rid of that stuff. Will they come back? Sure they will. Next spring. They'll come back next spring. Anyway, uh, verse 14. It's a habitation for dragons and a court for owls. The wild beasts of the desert shall also meet with the wild beasts of the island, and the satyr shall cry to his fellow. The satyr, I'm just going to touch on this very quick. I don't have the, the Hebrew here in front of you, but the Hebrew word satyr is here in Isaiah 34, and it's somewhere else, I think, in the book of Leviticus. And, it, and the King James translators translated it as devils. So what does that mean? It means that the word satyr here is specifically defined as a devil or a devilish type of creature. Alright? Shall cry to his fellow. Why is he crying to his fellow? He said, hey! Hey boys! 
I found us a place to inhabit. I found us a place. I was watching a video on these African wild dogs. And the guy that was shooting the video, he runs a, uh, one of these safari parks in Africa. And he was commenting to people. He was taking, he was showing these wild dogs. They were feeding off this Impala. It's a 1974 green Impala. They had, no, just, <laughs> he's feeding on this Impala. And he said, two of these dogs actually killed the Impala. But once they got it killed, they went back to the pack and barked at them. And that told them, hey, we found food. Come and get it. And he said, they're very social animals. And he said, like leopards, leopards don't do that. When a leopard kills something, he'll drag it up in a tree and say, this is mine. But the dogs, they'll always cry for their fellows to have them come over and share in the feast. Now you watch this. Has this not happened in your life? Where a situation that was small one day turned into something huge the next. And you just felt like life was out of control. You ever been there? What happened was, the, wild, the satyrs cried for their fellows. They said, we found blood. We found flesh. Come on over and feast in. Okay? That's just my how I see it. Verse 15, there shall the great owl make her nest and lay and hatch and gather under her shadow. There shall the vultures also be gathered, every one with her mate. I'm telling you. When one of them shows up, they'll announce to everybody else, we found a place to live. We found a place to inhabit. And all of a sudden, listen to me now. One little sin in your life turns into you're in backslid condition. You have got sin and devils all over you. Take a look up there on the screen. See him? See him? You know what's in there? There's three pictures up there on the screen of crocodiles. Three pictures, and all three of them have crocodiles in them. Let's see if I can do this here. No, it won't work. They're there. The top two pictures, if you look, the one on the left... In the water, right close to the edge there of the bank, you can see his head sticking up. Over there on the upper right hand, he's, in, he's part of the grass there. Those crocs will get in that water. And I've, and I've seen these deer-like creatures. I don't know if they're impalas or antelopes or whatever. And they'll go right down to the water hole and stick their nose down in the water and start drinking. And the next thing you know, a croc's got them right by the nose. They never saw it coming. And watch, there's, there's scripture for this. Take a look at this. Isn't it something that God made lions the same color as the grass that they're hiding in? That wasn't evolution. That wasn't some slip up of nature. That was God that designed it that way. They will hide everywhere. Look at Job 38, verse 39. What time is it? I'm going to read this and I want you to ponder this for a minute. Job 38, verse 39. Wilt thou hunt the prey for the lion or fill the appetite of the young lions when they couch in their dens and abide in the covert to lie in wait? The word cover is in the word covert. They've covered themselves up. They've hidden themselves. Jude. Jude said, For certain men have crept in. And it's interesting that he used the word crept. Lions creep. Tigers creep. Leopards creep. What else? Cougars creep. Snakes Huh? Cats? Oh yeah. They never announced their coming. Jude said certain men crept in unawares. 
false teachers will never come in the door ringing the bell saying, what I'm going to teach you is going to contradict everything out of the Bible and I'm going to get you to worship Satan. How's that? They'll never tell you that. They'll never tell you that they hate the Bible. They'll never just come out and tell you their agenda. They'll hide it some way. And they're just like the lion hiding in the grass. They look, watch this now, they look like their surroundings. A guy could come in to a church like ours, we're fairly conservative, we're a little laid back, not everybody wears a suit and tie in here. I don't when it's not Sunday morning, I just would rather not wear a suit and tie all the time every time I teach or preach. But we're fairly conservative. So somebody could come in this church dressed in a decent clothing and appear nice and be a lion waiting to devour people in this church. It's happened. It's happened. And it'll happen again. And they never announce themselves. But I got to quit. I didn't hear the bell ring, but I got to quit. I'll keep going and going and going. You ponder this. Okay? And if you want to study things, study lions in the Bible this week. Study lions. Okay? There's one who's the lion of Judah, and then there's another one who is a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. Satan as a roaring lion. He is going to try to appear like he's... Christ. Many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many, Jesus said. Those are the lions hiding in the grass, all right? Heavenly Father, give us wisdom. Give us sound wisdom, sound judgment, God. Knowing and understanding, God, that every now and then, the lions will be hiding. The dragons, Lord, will be building a nest somewhere in our, in our minds, in our life, dear God. They'll build up high places. And they'll try to get us to imagine vain things, Lord, that are against the knowledge of God that is in this Bible. God, fill our minds and our hearts with the Word. Make us sharp in the Word. Lord, I'm not saying that we have to be highly educated. You know that, God. You, Lord, you've taken the foolish of this world and taught them the right ways of the Word of God and they confound the wise. So, Father, we thank you for that. We ask you, God, Lord, to just fill us with sound wisdom and judgment. Give us eyes, Lord, that can spot the lions that are hiding in the covert. Give us ears, Lord, that we can hear things that are creeping in. Lord, help us in our lives, dear God, to stand strong and to have you with us, dear God, to chase away the enemy. Lord, bless and honor your word today, we pray in Jesus' name. All of God's people said, Amen.